Right guys, welcome back to Knowledge Hub. I'm Matt and this is Michael. Uh, following on from our previous um, video where we discussed ventilation requirements for a flueless cooker and we covered the room volume, what we're now going to look at is then measuring the ventilation or the vents in the property to make sure that it provides us enough air for the appliance that you are measuring and looking at the ventilation requirements for. So the first one we're going to look at then is the terracotta brick and measuring the terracotta brick to make sure it gives us the correct airflow into the property so the appliance um, can use it for its combustion purposes. So with the terracotta brick then that you can see here, so we've got the holes on the outside and if we turn it around you can see that we've got different size holes on the inside. Now ideally this vent will be measured by the person who was installing it in the first place. Now when we do that, where we can, we will always measure the inside holes of the vent. But if you're an engineer who's come to this property and you have to measure the ventilation requirements then all you're going to be able to do is measure the outside facing bit that you can see. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through measuring both sides and show you the difference between the calculations and the difference that the free air can provide um, whether you take the inner or the outer. Now if you notice on this vent here the, the customers tried blocking this up by using silicon so if you do come to any of these vents and they are blocked then it will either be at risk because it's providing insufficient ventilation or you're going to have to clear the vent yourself. So let's look at measuring it then. So the first thing we're going to do is measure the outside as though this vent is in situ when you as an engineer turn up. So what we need to do is we need to measure the height and the length of one of the individual openings on this vent. Now we're going to do all measurements in millimetres and then we're going to convert to centimetres squared to give us a free air requirements. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the height. So I'm going to place my ruler on, I'm going to measure the height and this one is coming out at 11 millimetres. Once I've done that, I'm then going to measure the length using the same process, just a ruler. And again, that one's come out at 11 millimetres. So I've got two figures there, which is 11 by 11. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to calculate how many holes are on this individual vent. So I'm just going to count them. So we've got 36 holes on here. If you now look at the board, my wonderful assistant Michael is going to show you how to calculate it. Okay, so we've got 11 millimetres by 11 millimetres, which is giving us 121 millimetres per um, hole. As Matt was saying, there's 36 of those holes, so it's 121 multiplied by 36 using my trusty calc. So that means we've got a total of four, three, five, six millimetres of free air. Okay, so now we've done the measurements. We've got 11 by 11 on the, each of the um, apertures, giving us a total of 121 millimetres times by 36 of the holes. That gives us a total of four, three five six millimeters squared as we said before ventilation is always um, calculated and measured in centimeters so therefore we need to divide that by a hundred and that will give us a figure of 43.56 centimeters squared so that's now going to show you the measurement of that terracotta brick using the measurements on the back of the uh, holes and therefore you will be able to see the difference that that can make for your ventilation calculation. Cool, so using the same process as we did before then, all I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the length and the height uh, of an individual opening. We already know there's 36 of them so then we can calculate that. So again now using a ruler and using millimetres, so I've got a height of nine millimetres 
and I've got a length of nine millimeters. As Matt's um, shown there, we've got nine by nine will give us 81 millimeters per aperture. That is now multiplied by 36. So now we've got a figure of 2916 millimeters divided by our 100 to give us our centimeters. So that is 29.16 centimeters squared. So straight away you can see that if you went on the calculations at the front of that vent, if you were requiring um, something around the, uh, the 43 uh, mark, then that's going to be sufficient. But because we've measured the back of the vent, which is really the free air, we're coming out at 29.16. So therefore that um, air brick would not be sufficient. Okay, the next one we're going to look at then is measuring uh, the plastic type vents, which are more commonly seen nowadays. You tend to get the terracotta bricks on the older style houses and the plastic air vents on the newer ones. Now, most plastic vents come with a free air requirement stamped on the vent. However, this is not always the case, so we're going to look at measuring the vent to see what free air this gives us. So, with this one, it's uh, similar to what we did before so we're going to need a ruler to measure it so as we can see here it's split so we've got basically a plastic joint down the middle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure an individual opening I'm going to measure its length I'm then going to measure the angle of this opening and then we're going to times that by how many there is so let's have a look at the length first of all So the length of this individual opening here is 160 millimetres. So Michael's just going to write that on the board. And the next thing we need to do is get the angle of it. Now this is where people tend to go wrong. Because people tend to measure the width of this vent. And it's not the width that we're looking for. It's the angle. So using my ruler, I get the ruler and I place it on the angle of the louver of the vent. Now where this is on the angle, very difficult to see, but you can see now that I've got the ruler on the angle of the vent and from the bottom to the top on the angle we can see it's approximately 9 millimetres. So what we'll do is we'll take this measurement again now and put it on the board. So we've got 160 times 9 millimetres. So what we do now is we times them two figures together and Michael with his trusty calculator will do that for us. That's right. Not using my functional skills, of course. That mm. comes later. So we've got 160 multiplied by 9 gives us a total of 1440. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do now we've got that is again, similar to the terracotta brick, now we've got to calculate how many individual louvers they are on this vent. So again, I'm going to calculate them. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I've got the same on that side. So there's 22 individual louvers on there. So on there we've got 22 multiplied by the 1440 is equal to 31680. Okay, so we've got the figure of 22 multiplied by 1440, which gives us a total um, figure of 31680 millimetres. We divide that by 100 and this converts it into our centimetres. So that will give us 316.80 centimetres squared. So on that vent, that is giving us a total uh, volume of air, free air of 316.80 centimetres. Okay, the last one we're going to look at then is if you as an engineer come into a property and you find a vent that's looking like this. 
Now this is what's known as an openable or closable vent. So we can open it or the customer can close it. Now open and closable gas uh, vents are not allowed for use with gas appliances. So the vent must be permanently open at all times. And if we open this one again, we can see what we've got, what looks like a fly screen inside. So if you come to a vent and it's open and there's any mesh or what we call a fly screen inside, again, it's not allowed for a gas fired appliance. The other type of vent that we've got is one what looks like this and this is an half and half vent again this would suffice for a gas fired appliance all we'd have to do is measure it exactly the same to see what it would provide now because it's an half and half we can see we'd got we'd get a lot less free air through this vent but the measurement is exactly the same so it's the angle of the louver the length of the louver times by how many there is will give us a centimeter squared of free air so that's ventilation measurement covered now. So you can see by his previous video where we've measured the room volume. We got the room volume. We've confirmed that with BS5440 and we've looked at the requirements for a flueless cooker in this case. Um, if it's 50 centimetres squared or 100 centimetres squared requirement, you can see what we're going to have to do as an engineer is measure the vent size to see if that vent will give us enough free air to allow for the correct combustion of that appliance. And that, guys, is ventilation for a flueless cooker and measuring ventilation. So that's it from uh, Matt and myself, Michael. Uh, please like and subscribe to the Knowledge Hub, and we hope to see you soon. Thank <music> you.